Hello everyone, I hope you're fine. This is part 3 and the final part of my truck slash car animation tutorial. Links to part 1 and part 2 will be in the description. And today we are going to cover render settings, export and composition in DaVinci Resolve including my color grading, lens flare in After Effects and the final mix back in DaVinci Resolve. Ok now let's start with the render settings. Of course I'm using Cycles for the render engine and my GPU. And for your information, I have an RTX 3080. For the render itself, uh, I'm using a noise threshold of 0.01. My samples at 4096. But uh, my advice would be that you start at uh, lower uh, samples and you see if the image is uh, good enough for you. Or what you can do is to test at 4000 and then 1000 and 2000 and compare the different images. I have no, no minimum samples and time limit to zero. Of course I'm using a denoiser and because I have an RTX card, I'm using a optics as a denoiser. All the different parameters I set by default, only the motion blur which is activated of course. And for the motion blur, I didn't touch anything. That's pretty much it for the render properties. Let's go in the, the output properties. For the resolution, as I told you, for a cinematic look, I have a resolution of 1920 by uh, 810. I use 24 FPS and I render everything in PNG files. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is the color management. I'm using a, a display device a sRGB and uh, transform to filmic and view transform to filmic look none because uh, I like to grade everything myself in DaVinci Resolve. That's it for the render settings. Now let's jump in DaVinci Resolve. If you don't have DaVinci Resolve, you can download it for free. The link will be in the description. And believe me, we can do everything that we need with this free version. Editing, color correction, visual effects, motion graphics, audio post-production, and again, this is all free. Okay, now that you have downloaded and installed DaVinci Resolve, uh, let's go in the Media tab, because uh, there is a parameter that we have to change in order to import our clips. Okay, now you have all your renders ready. Uh, let's say you are 200 frames, and you want to import that as a sequence in DaVinci Resolve. The issue is, if you take the, this uh, directory, for example, T1 Pro here, and I drag it in DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, I have not a sequence, but I have some independent images. So this is not what we want. So in order to fix that, you go in the Media tab, and you click here on those three dots, Frame Display Mode, and you select Sequence. And you just have to do that one time. And now, if I move, if I drag and drop my directory again here, so now I have a real image sequence. Okay, so don't forget to do that before you work in DaVinci Resolve. You go in the Media tab, you click on the three dots, Frame Display Mode, and you select Sequence. Okay, now let's go in the Edit tab, because this is where we are going to edit our project. When you are in the Edit tab, you can click on the Media Pool. So this is where you're going to have all the different files that you want to put on your timeline. So here is your timeline. Let's say that I, we have just rendered the clip T1 Prod from uh, Blender. Okay, this is the, the file we've been uh, working on on Blender. Let's say you want to have a part of this clip on your timeline for your project. So all you have to do, you select your clip. And here, for example, you select the start frame. And let's say I want to start from here. You press I on your keyboard. And then you select an end frame. And let's say here. And you press O on your keyboard. So I to uh, indicate the start and O to indicate the, 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 the end frame that you want to import on your timeline. And then you just have to drag your clip like that on your timeline. So now on your timeline, you just have the portion of the clip that you have selected. And you can do the same for the other clips. So let's say for this close-up, you press I on your keyboard, you select where you want to stop, let's say here, and O, and you drag your clip here. I will not go too deep in uh, DaVinci Resolve for the shortcuts and stuff like that because it could be a, a video by itself, but I just want to show you how you can easily uh, edit your project in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, now let's go uh, in the color grading tab. Let's say I want to grade this clip and I will show you my, my workflow for that. So you click here on color. Okay, now you see the clip and here you have all the tools that you need for the color grading. And like in Blender, DaVinci Resolve is using nodes. 
for the color correction. So you can use serial nodes or parallel nodes, etc., etc. But uh, today we will do a very simple grading just to show you how it works. And maybe in a future video, I will dedicate some uh, video only for the color grading because uh, it's, a, it's a big part by, by itself. Okay, uh, the, the basic color grading that I did for this video in the first node, okay, in the first node, uh, I like to do uh, my uh, basic correction. I can see that it's uh, the black are not in uh, the zero value. So I will just... Uh, put some more blacks on the on the scene and maybe minus zero zero one yeah just like that and for the highlights okay the black is the lift and the highlights uh, the highlights sorry are in the gain so for the highlights I will give it some contrast so more black and more highlights which will give more contrast okay something like that and as you can see now if I press control D you can already see that we have added some contrast in our scene. And that's pretty much it for the first node. And then I like to add another node for the look. And for the look, I'm going to use a LUT here. And I use a LUT that I have created. So I always use my LUTs to, to do my projects. And because I love you guys, I will put the link to my LUT in the description. So you can follow along. And you can also use it in your in your project. So you just drag the LUT here on the second node, and, and and now as you can see, I'm giving a blue tint to 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 my image, and it's maybe a little bit too much. So for the gain, so here you go in um, key, and you can lower the gain, so the influence of this node, and I will go for something like 0 0.5. Okay, now let me show you the difference. So control D, now I deactivate the LUT, and now I activate the LUT, as you can see. There are some blues in the shadows and uh, in the highlights. Of course, what we could do if it was uh, more advanced, uh, we could uh, isolate the, the lights and just apply the LUT to everything, not but, uh, but the lights. But because it's a beginner level, we just do something like that, and it will be, it will be good uh, enough. Okay, so very easy. The second one is just my, my LUT at uh, 50%. And then I'll add a third one, so Alt S to add another node. And this time I will go in Effect. And I like to use this um, plugin, Film Convert. It's a great plugin that a lot of uh, filmmakers are using. And as you know, I am come from the filmmaking world and I was doing a short horror film. So this plugin is, is really a great plugin to give some film look to, the, to your project. So you just drag this plugin on the third node, like that. And I will put the link in the description. And here, as you can see, my image is much darker, true, but there is this, uh, this cinematic, cinematic look that we can already feel to the, to the image just by applying this plugin. And what I like to do for the film stock, I go for the 5213, this one, because it's uh, giving a more bl bluish look. And I also like to raise the exposure for this project because it's a little bit too dark for now. So let's go something like, yeah, something like that. And for the grain, there is a 100% grain and I like this because it's giving some imperfection to the image. So le let's stick to that. And maybe I will add a little bit of saturation. Yeah, something like that. So as you can see, this plugin is adding a lot to the to the to the look. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the for the look. So now that you have these three nodes, of course, if you don't have the plugin, that's okay. You can you can do without the plugin. You can just uh, do like that. It's okay. Or you maybe you can add some grains yourself on the image. And if you want to apply this look to uh, another image, all you have to do, I will bring back the clips and let's say now you want to uh, color grade the same way this uh, clip you just go on this one the one that we just did you press ctrl c you go on the new one and you press ctrl v so you will apply the same nodes on the clip and if needed you can do of course the correction that you want on the on the different nodes now let's go back actually in the edit mode 
and I will show you the, the, the different effects that I add on my image, and you will have them in the, in the free version as well. So you go on your first clip, you go in effect, and you search for glow, and to apply this effect to your, to your clip, you just have to drag it and drop it on your clip. And as you can see now, I have some glow on the headlights and on the different lights. Let me see what was my different values, so you can see on my original clip. So you go in effect to see the different effects that you have on your clip. And here, as you can see, I have a glow. And here are the values that I have selected. I think it's the default values. And here's the effect without and with the glow. And I also add a vignette, so it's only two effects on the clip, a glow and a vignette. And here are the values that I have for the vignette. And uh, I like to use a vignette. As you can see, it's uh, helping to bring the focus to the main object. And like the color grading, if you want to copy the effects to the different clips, all you have to do is to press Ctrl C and you go on the second clip and you press this time Alt V and you select the effects that you want to copy. And for, for this uh, case, it's the plugins that you want to copy, and maybe if you want to copy the color creation, you can do it here too, and you can select what you want to copy to another clip. Okay, before we uh, finalize the composition in DaVinci Resolve, uh, let's go in After Effects. So I will show you how uh, I add so the, the lens flare, and then we will come back in DaVinci Resolve to finalize the rain effect and the integration of the lens flare. Okay, I have After Effect open. You drag the files you just rendered and it will create a sequence automatically. Before you create a new composition, just right click on your files and you go in Interpret Footage, Main, and you change the frame rate to 24. After that, you can simply drag the files into your composition, just like that. From there, I will select only the frames I want to work on. I change my work area like, like this and maybe like this. Wait. So right click and trim comp to work area. And now we are going to track the position of the headlights because we want the lens flare to follow the headlights. So right click and new and null object. You click on the track layer, then you go in the tracker tab and track motion. Uh, let me move the tracker. I will zoom uh, somewhere like here and you press analyze forward. Okay, it seems that I have a good tracking. And now we want to affect those positions to our null object. So you click on edit target and you select your null and you press OK and now apply. Now we know that we have the tracking information on the null object. Let's add the, the lens flare now. And for that, you go in effects and presets and you have a free version. I think it's the name is uh, Lens Flare. You can use this one, for example. Let me show you how it looks. Okay, it's something like that. And you can move it around and maybe do some color grading to change the color, etc. But for my case, I will use the optical flares from Video Copilot. The link will be in the description. There are a lot of different options. They are very good looking and I use it since a long time. So I'll stick to that. You drag the effect on your clip and let's change the Lens Flare visual. So you go in option and here you have different presets. I click on preset browser, pro preset two, and I will go for this one. And the cool thing here in this uh, optical flares option is that you can change the look of the lens flare. For example, if you don't want those uh, red uh, little artifacts here, you can hide them or maybe uh, you don't want those uh, big uh, balls here you can deactivate them. So I, I will not do that now for each element, but it's up to you to select what you want to display for your lens flare. And from there, you click OK, and you change the render mode on uh, over original. And here I have my lens flare. Of course, so what we want is to have this lens flare at the headlight position. So what we're going to do, here you click on your track, and you go in Effect, Optical Flares, and for the position, we are going to link that to our null object. And then you go in Null, Transform, and Position. So here, you have this uh, little icon that you link to the position of the null. And now we have our lens flare following the null. So if we play the animation now, as you can see, it's perfectly following the headlights. From there, you can change the brightness if you want, the scale, and you can also add key points if you want to animate those values. Okay, when you have something that you like, I will show you how to export that to DaVinci Resolve. On the effect, you change over original to on transparent because we only want the, the effect. 
Then you go in composition. I like to use a media encoder, but uh, you can use uh, directly the render of uh, After Effects. It's up to you. From there, it's okay to export as an MP4 format, as a video format. And you just press on the play icon to render your animation. That's it for the After Effects part. Let's go back in DaVinci Resolve for the final composition. Okay, we are back in DaVinci Resolve. And here is the clip we just created in After Effects. Now all you have to do is to click on this little icon to only drag the image on your timeline. And with your clip selected, you go in video and you change the composite mode to screen. And because we use the same frames in After Effects uh, that the one in DaVinci Resolve, our lens flare is perfectly following the headlight. When you've done one headlight, you can do the other one. And now let's deal with the rain. As you can see, I got some rain, but it's not heavy enough for my taste. And that's why I told you to render only the rain in Blender. Okay, so what you are going to do, you have the sequence you have render from a Blender, the sequence with only the rain, you drop it on your timeline. And now, as you can see, we have more rain in our scene. The only issue is that it's all black. Mm -hmm. Then you go in the color tab and with your rain selected, and then you are going to raise the offset. It's like the general lighting of your sequence. And now, as you can see, we went from black to here, some lights. And maybe you can go until 76. Yeah, like that, because you are going to lower the intensity in the Edit tab. Now you go back in the Edit tab. So what we could do to lower the intensity is just to uh, lower the opacity of the clip. So it would go for something like 50. And that's looking pretty good. So we went from uh, this to this with a lot of uh, rains that you can control. And because we did that on the separate layer, we can control the intensity to match our need. If you want more rain or if you want less rain, it's up to you now to play with the opacity. And because it's a little bit too sharp, what we could do also is to add a blur effect on the rain. So you go in effect, you search for, here you have a lens blur. You drag the lens blur on your clip. You click on effect here. Let me test. And here, as you can see, it's a little bit too much. So I will allow the intensity of the blur for something like maybe, maybe like this. Yeah, it's better. So now we still have our raindrops, but it's a little bit blurry. So for me, it's adding to the realism of the rain. We could stop here for the rain, but I decided to add another layer, uh, which is a stock video from Action VFX. Let me show you the result. So this is the without the stock video, and this is with the stock video. And I think it's filling all the little gaps in the animation, and it's adding to the general look of the scene. Action VFX is like a standard for the stock footage for your visual effects. It's my personal opinion. I'm not paid by them. But if you're looking for high quality stock footage for your projects, I think you should have a look at this uh, website. I will put the link in the description. For this clip video, I also added a lens blur effect to soften the, the image, to soften the look. And I choose a value of two. I also added a glow for the headlights. And here are my values and the lens blur as well with a value of two. So now let me do a final view of what we did in uh, DaVinci Resolve. So I will deactivate everything. So we went from there, from a very flat image, and we added uh, the color grading, and then we added the lens flare, then we added some more rain, and the final touch, with the stock rain. But of course, we can improve a lot of things as always in the project, but sometimes you need to know when to stop and when it's good enough. Well, that's it guys for this uh, final part. If you have uh, questions, as usual, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. And I have uh, something big going on right now, and it will be in my next video because I've been working on this new project since a long time now. And I will be, uh, and I'm very excited to present it in my next video. So thank you for watching guys and I talk to you soon. Bye bye.